Come, Gabby, friends around your flickering campfires and... Ow! Excuse me, Uncle Bob Bob. Can you put it over there, please, dear listener? Bilbo, I am introing. By making Yorkshire puddings or Pear Bear at a pop-up carvery, you interrupt at your peril. One does not mess with my pop-up meat. Tombo, where's the drilling? There should be drilling. All right, Pear Bear, keep your shirt on while I get mine off. Marvellous. Uh, what are you and the listener up to? What is, what is happening here? What's happening here is the opening day of the Silly History Hub and Lulbury. And we're behind. The kind listener has given up their valuable time to help us. I sent you the memo, Bob Bob. What? The, the soiled carvery napkin, scrawled with books or something that you shoved under my door? The very same. And Lulbury, come on, that is so lame. Spontaneous joy in a place of staid learning. Ha! Library laughing indeed. No, silly. It stands for learn out loud. Watch. <clears throat> Vikings were extremely clean and regularly bathed and groomed themselves. The Old Norse word for Saturday, Lagerdaga, means hot water day, which can be translated as washing day. Stop annoying the listener with stuff I already know, Bilbo. Oh, bums, the cannon cannon's blocking the fire exit. Oh, great, the cannon cannon is here. It's all here, Uncle Bob Bob. Look, over there is the narration station. With a new story sofa. The old one was, you know, <laughs> spoiled. There's a shower block in case the narrative gets too filthy. Very wise. And we have a lounge for when you want to have some me the evil time. <laughs> uh. Where I suppose one can stretch and sigh at great volume so one can be seen to be lounging out loud. Don't be silly. What is that next to the chaise lol? That is the cool new interactive disinformation station. With all the new history being created, you too can experience what it's like to be a soulless shill pulling truth pints at the gaudy leaving do we're throwing for civilization. Are you okay, Bilbo? No, I'm not. How's it work? Well, you just stick your face in that hole and have a propaganda. Ooh, give us a look. There's no time. Ooh. Right, I've had enough of this. Stop derailing me. I haven't even finished the intro. We need to accept the intro has stalled, Bob Bob. Ugh. Now my Fitbit is vibrating and I'm all tense. Thank you very much. Why don't you go into the Lulbury with a nice book and a cup of tea? There'd better not be a time-travelling tea trolley in there, Bilbo. It was called the tea time trolley, Bob Bob. Mm. I'll go get Pear Bear and we'll be along. Come on, sweet, knotted Uncle Bob Bob. Let's get you a nice, comforting book about vicious war murder. What on earth? Oh no, I think it might be a case of when on earth. No, 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 get the door, Tombo. <gasps> The history hub has gone. It's now a street scene, Bob Bob. A London street scene. I swore that I would never get within spitting distance of Harry Potter world again. Do you hear me, universe? Well, I can't speak for the universe, but all I heard was pot. And if it's a teapot you seek, you are in the right place. <laughs> this is a tea room. For your information, you are in a tea room. We are setting the scene. It is a tea room. Listen, my good man, I'll apologise now, but I'm not having the best of days. I came here for some comforting words. Ah, perchance I can be the smooth facilitator your canals crave. Abating, encouraging, soothing, sustaining. Please stop. My apologies. As a wordsmith, my tongue is tightly sprung. My glottis won't stop this. My Please, stop. Of course. Well, if you are probing for print, frisking for fiction, or having a good old-fashioned scrabble for words, I shall make myself scarce. I will ensconce myself in this book nook with my diary and enjoy this 17th century London tea house. Mm. My gosh, your famed writer and tea freak, Samuel Pepys. You recognise me? 
<laughs> well, it does say, Sammy's diary, hands off, all over your book, mate. The fluffy heart-shaped padlock is a, is a very nice touch, and, um... <laughs> No matter how much I but remind Bilbo, you, don't Bappy close the and door. Bilbo, Pepe, look who we found. Samuel Peeps. The carbonated soda guy. Wow, it's an honour. Uh, I love that whole thing about the jet. Um, what? Sorry, Mr Peeps. He's only ever seen your name written down. Well, it gladdens my heart to be in print. And please, call me Sam. Oh, the diary guy. Yeah, I read some bits of it when I was researching tea. You've read my diary, my inner space on display for all and sundry to pour over. The innocence of my poor diary sullied. Why, it hardly absorbed what life had to offer. You what? It, w- it was published in 1825. It's really popular. 1825? Are you crazed, delirious, demented, deranged, frenzied, what, insane, what's he doing? non-comprehensive, Please stop. raving, Mr. Peeps. unbalanced, uh, uh, unhinged, uh, uh, stop. 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 Mind. Bat poo crazy. Mr. Peeps, uh, Sam, Bilbo here must have been confused. <laughs> it's my base state. Well, I was going to say, 1825? How long have I been writing it? (laughs) I started in 1660, and I've only been putting my essence to paper for six years. This is London, in 1666? Of course. We can go see England lift the World Cup. That's the Jules Rimet trophy. I know football stuff. Lower your voices, boys. You must take care when flagrantly pronouncing French names. Have you been living Sue on Rocher? The French are silent partners with the Dutch in a war against Britain. A going on right now war. We are roughly one year into the Second Anglo-Dutch War and folks around are getting pretty tetchy when it comes to foreigners. Just for once, I'd like to walk through a magic history door and have stuff be different. I advise a tea leaf. (laughs) Be taken from your pet bear's book and remain silent. It's Pear Bear, and he was always going to be a silent tea assassin in here. He hasn't stopped for breath. Admirable, commendable, excellent, exquisite, laudable. Mr. Peeps, please. Sorry, last one, I promise. Sam, I'm confused. This is London. Oh, day tripper, are we? By no means. Oh, I'm no stranger to the Megabus Youth Hostel Thrill Seeker package. How nice for you. He means it looks different to how we thought it would be. It looks busy. I don't like busy. Well, suck it up, Buttercup. London is by far the largest city in Britain and the third largest in the Western world. Ah, it also looks cramped. Well, up to 400,000 people live here, Bilbo. Cheek by jowl in this... Hang on. Wooden, northern and inartificial congestion of houses. You feeling okay, Bilbo? Yeah, I'm okay. Just reading. Reading what? Uh, A diary by, um, John Evelyn. You are a menace to privacy, Bilbo. What did Evelyn mean by inartificial? Like, full of influencer frauds? Um, no. He means the city layout is unplanned and improvised. (laughs) What, like a silly history boy gig? Growing organically as it sprawls forth, unabashed and unregulated. Definitely like a silly history boy gig. You see, London has been a Roman settlement. 400 years of sandals and hard artisanal bread really brings in the punters. Before you know it, blammo, it is crowded within these city walls, so it pushes outwards. Oh, Bilbo, you have returned to your base state by the look of it. Do you have a question? Yeah, why are we talking about this? Well, I thought perhaps a quick overview of a cramped and densely populated partly wooden city might come in handy, you know, for no particular reason. Densely populated, you say? Oh my, yes. Had a sobering bubonic plague fest last year to really highlight the denseness. Do you know what this means? I will make bank with street theatre. 
Oh, Pooh, but I left my motorised history goat and fire-eating kit back at the history. Fire-eating? Tombo, you reckless ninny! One does not fool with fire on a whim, especially in a narrow tinderbox such as 17th century London. Whim? I'll have you know I spent 90 minutes, count them, 90 minutes looking at YouTube. Leave my tube out of this. Right now, come on, boys. All this talk of flame and flusterment has me feeling as cooped up as a Frenchman hiding in a Dutch sympathizer's basement. After you, Sam. Ah, but Bilbo, a word of caution. You sound a wee bit French, yes? Uh, no. It's just how we silly boys choose to have the French speak. Well, maybe in the spirit of not being attacked in the street, why not soften those hard vowel sounds of yours, eh? Oh, come on, Sam, you sound like the other silly boys when they have some narration to do. Ooh, we couldn't possibly have hard vowel sounds when storytelling. Won't someone think of the softier children? Are you done? Yes. Then onwards. <laughs> Ah, uh, London. Saturday the 1st of September, 1666. Sorry, <laughs> diary thing. Wow, I didn't expect it to be so medieval. Yes, the layout is awfully winding and cobbled, is it not? These houses are a bit weird. Very astute, young Bob Bob. The weirdness you are spying are jetties. A building's footprint upon the ground is small, but they project out and get bigger as the floors go up. They're, like, really close at the top. Let's see what Sam means about fooling with flames, Tombo. It's pretty dry out here and there's a lot of wood. Fun fact! Building with wood and having thatched roofs has been prohibited for centuries, but they are cheap materials, so... Why not just build with brick and stone? Expense, Bilbo. Those materials are for the wealthier city centre. Look! Those two buildings' top floors look like they're kissing. <laughs> In 1661, a notice was given by King Charles II forbidding overhanging windows. Oh, we know him. In four years' time, we'll rob his wife's tea while she's busy cosplaying. It's in our tea episode. OK, well, like the local government on this overhanging window issue, I'm going to ignore you. <laughs> Charles then gave a scathing risk assessment regarding fire within these cramped streets. And he's got a point. Can you imagine the carnage? The awful sights? The terrible smells? Something smells actually rather good, but what is that? We're in Pudding Lane, home of the bakers. Hey, what say we lay hands on supplies, then continue our walking tour? Destination Casa Peeps. Me and Mrs. Peeps were thinking about visiting a puppet show later. Puppet show and a sleepover? Go on then, you little scamp. Sleeps at Peeps. I know a marvellous cider place yonder. Let's stock up. Onwards, Dombo! Lead on, Sam. Oh, Pear Bear, Bilbo, you get the bready goodness. But the gluten. It's the 17th century. It probably hasn't been invented. I'm not sure that's a thing. Wait for me, Tombo! Tombo! Wait for me! Ah, uh, well, come on then, Pear Bear. And done. Wow! Definitely going to need the toilet later. Ah, oh, smells comfortable in here. Welcome. My name is Thomas Farriner, proprietor of the Fishyard Bakery. Ugh, fishy bread. Ha, <laughs> yeah. I should prob stop saying that. Say Pudding Lane, that's way more comforting. You call it what you want, darling. Great. So, what do you have that's gluten-free? You, you what? <laughs> I'm difficult. And hard veiled by the sound of it. <laughs> now, listen. I'm feeling kind today, so I'll say this once. This bakery is perhaps the most patriotic bakery in London, providing bread to the Navy as they fight valiantly against those flipping pancake fondlers. Them and their French mates. I was going to say I'm intolerant, but you seem to have that covered. Silence, sir. 
Oh, yeah, you understood that, did you? We don't need no olive-skinned patisserie spies in here, yeah? You got ten seconds to get on your villu, or I'm going to go against everything I stand for, bake a baguette, and then we'll see how intolerant you are when I stick it. Sacred Blue, is that the time? I, uh, I told the boys I'd help them carry the cider. Cool. Okay, I'm out of here. Bilbo, wait! But you are very welcome, my pasty white complexioned friend. Let our conversational vows be as soft as the delicious bready goods you see before you. Well, I do like toast. Oh, all right, I'll stay. Oh my god, oh my god, oh my god, oh my god, oh my god. I knew Brad didn't agree with me. Eh, uh, bonjour, man and me. Best to bien. Uh, ça va bien, merci. Sorry, I only got a C at GCSE. Uh, my fault. Wait, you're an English person. I would have bet all the cogs in my pocket that we came from the same shores. That's why I followed you. My name is Robert Hubert. Oh, hello, Robert. I'm Bilbo. That's a nice name. Hey, Bilbo, do you fancy a watch? Depends. What's on? Ta-da! There's a watch for you. I make watches. Put it round your wrist, though. Don't eat it, or your tummy will get all angry. Are you okay? No, I'm Robert. <laughs> It is a lovely watch, Robert. Thanks. I can't use my arms that good, but my fingers can dance to the music of time. That and the sugar bed. Listen, Robert, you seem nice. Ruan? Uh, and from Ruan? No, I mean, just listen. You need to be careful around here because you're, well, you know. <gasps> a watchmaker! I thought I was getting funny looks when I was buying materials. It's the Grandfather Clock Mafia, you know. Robert, those were bakeries. Oh, that explains why my last sandwich didn't hurt my insides as much as usual. Listen, mate, I think I saw a hardware store when I was running for my life. Come on, it's this way. Bilbo? Bilbo? I'll catch you up, Robert. There you are, Bilbo. Hey, where's Pear Bear? Oh, he's at an intense bakery. Will that boy ever leave university? <laughs> well, come on, then. I'm itching to get to that puppet show. I'm just helping Robert with something. Robert? Ooh la la. Come on, man. I think he's going through some stuff. Yeah. Cider last time I saw him. I'll catch you up, Tombo. Oh, Robert. Tombo. Oh, Tombo. Here I am. Come on, let's go. Where is your, um, pet bear? He's having a marathon sesh at a bakery. <gasps> Did he find the fabled 24-hour Greggs? Bob, Bob. Wait, aren't you with Bilbo? Do I look like I'm with Bilbo? He said he was helping... Robert. Robert is only used for saucy emergencies like the Greg's online help desk or when Mrs. Bob Bob is chastising me mid manoeuvre in the car park of Greg's. Do we wait for him? No. Robert, indeed. Plus, I need to see this puppet show. And then there were three. <laughs> Onward, you silly boys. The reason for the war. What's the reason for anything? Politics and money, mate. Those pesky clog hoppers and their monopolies. Don't pass go, don't collect 200 quid monopoly or the Dutch East India Company monopoly. Yeah, them. Hogging all the slaves. Oh, gosh. Where's the uncomfortable history alarm? You could have given me some warning. Snowflakes don't last long in hot bakeries, mate. But... You heard of the RAC? Great bunch of lads in a pinch. I'm a member. Man after my own heart. But then I don't see what you're moaning about. King Charles and his brother James, Duke of York, set up the Royal African Company, the RAC, to bust up the Dutch hold over the Atlantic slave trade. Oh no, that's the wrong RAC. There you go again. Put down that glass of Woka Cola, won't ya? You libs are probably happy it all went to heck. Oh no, did your race race not pan out? You heard in New York. So good they named it twice? So good we renamed it once, mate. August 1664. We first occupied New Amsterdam and renamed it New York City before taking other outposts. But in early 1665, the Dutch took those outposts back. 
The RAC went bankrupt, and the money men saw this current war as the best way to make their money back. Very sensible, if you ask me. You joking, right? Does all this bread I'm making from bread look like a joke? I'm fanning myself with all my money, by the way. Well, yeah, I see that. You'd better stop, haven't you? Don't want to be causing unwanted gusts. A fire hazard, that is. You haven't even got a hot work permit. Blimey, you're a lefty box ticker, aren't you? You don't get to be one of the best-known bakers in London without knowing what you're doing. Well, what are you doing? Shutting down the bakery, innit? All I have to do is rake the coals of the dying fire, and voila! I mean, there you flippin' have it. See what happens when I'm too long around you moaners. Me? You've been making sourdough all night, pal! You don't know you're born. And after all that uncomfortable history I gave you for free, tell you what, you can close down the bakehouse. Bit of honest work will straighten you out. Get raking those coals, Wokey the Bear. <sighs> Oscillating sprockets. These back roads are as winding as a crafty spring. We have been walking for ages, Robert. All Saturday night, in fact. Oh, just we. Definitely. I take full responsibility. It's okay, Robert. It's actually quite interesting to amble round a historic town without any pressure. Usually I'm frantically hunting for something like loose leaf tea or part of the One True Cross. Ah, yes, very relatable. And, and this show is for children, you say? So they keep reminding me and... What's that smell? Sunday morning? No, it's, uh... Could we stumble back into the bakery district? Again, my fault. One leg shorter than the other, I'm afraid. No, it's a lovely wood smoked aroma, and, um... um mm, yes, I'm getting hints of personal effects. Fire! Fire! Oh, no. Fire! Fire! Excuse me, sir, what's happening? Oh, you know, they're having an autumn sale at Selfridges, mate. It's a fire, you doorknob! Oh, no, extra large knickers. A bakery in Pudding Lane. Phew, I was worried you were going to say Fish Yard. Yeah, that's the one. Oh, no, I've got to find Pear Bear. Robert, you... Where's he gone? Did I detect an accent there? Who are you talking about? The young friend... Friend of mine, whom I was with just now. Heading towards the fire like everyone else, no doubt. Just follow the queue for the half-priced blouses, pal. Yes, thank you. Well, that's just great, Pear Bear. You had one job. No, it was your job. Why did you leave a fire lit? Hey, listen here, you little melt. As I was climbing out the burning building with my daughter Hannah and son Thomas, we had plenty of time to get our story straight. I would be very interested to hear that, Mr. Baker. It's Mr. Farina. Noted. How's that spelt? Like the flower? Who's this? Mayor Thomas Bloodworth, 330th Mayor of London and former turkey merchant. That would have gone lovely with your bread and cranberry sauce before you overcooked it, Mr. Farina. I have a watertight excuse that I'm now just forming, and it doesn't involve turkey sandwiches. No, silly, not Turkey the bird. Turkey is in the Ottoman Empire. Rum and spices and the like. Mm. Well, this has been nice, hasn't it? The bakery is on fire. As a former timber merchant, I would say that fire for wood is bad. Uh, where were we? Stood in front of a burning building, listening to Farriner's excuse. Oh, yeah. Well... It, it went like this. It's like midnight and Hannah... Hannah? My daughter. Well, she went downstairs to the bakehouse to get a light for the candle. At midnight? Stop interrupting, Mayor. But, yeah, at midnight? Um, well, anyway, there may or may not have been wood for the following week, drying close to, or perhaps inside, the oven. Inside the oven? Did I say inside? I, I meant, um... Sorry? What was that, Hannah? Uh, oh, yeah, yeah. Silly me, I forgot. As it turns out, there wasn't enough fire in the oven to light the candle, so she found a flame elsewhere. Elsewhere? Just like that? Oh, yeah, easily done. Anyway, 
soon after we're all asleep. And with that being said, oh, oh I better be turning in. I'm pushed. <laughs> oh, me too. What a night. The city is on fire! Well, it's one building. Well, what are you going to do? Gosh, I'm sorry, Doc. Were you talking to me? You're the mayor! And don't you forget it? The fire! Oh, come now. I think you're overthinking this, good sir. We have fires in London all the time. And this doesn't seem that bad, does it? Nah, mate. Me and all the important stuff made it out. Um, where's your maid? Um... So it's not that bad, eh? By no means. Why, a woman could pee this out, I'd wager. A woman is dead! This is bad, man! Fine, if you're going to be all prissy about it. Well, there are water pipes that run beneath our feet. They can be severed and then leather buckets can be filled and whatnot. Do you have fire engines? Of course we do. We're not backward. Some of them even have wheels. What? Though I doubt there'll be much use in these narrow streets. Plus, they're kept a long way away and have a tendency to turn up late. Boom, what a pickle. Firebreakers! You seem to be V well informed, young man. You don't get to be technical manager of the Silly History Boys show by accident, you know. All those health and safety fire drills I made the boys do will now pay off. May I say, you are a bellman of the highest order. That's what they said. A bellman. As in one who patrols the streets nightly in search of fire? Yes, and alerts with a bell. Yes, 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 we know. Right, we need fire hooks. Of course. And what are those for? To bring down the adjacent houses. To break the fire. That is an idea if I ever heard one. Excuse me, my blood work. I am the sinister British lawyer representing the parasitic proprietors of Pudding Lane. I mean, the landlords. Oh, hello there. How convenient. Lovely to meet you. And I, you. I am sure you are aware that the neighbouring properties of the one which is now very much aflame are not owned by the people who reside within them. Oh, what, those folks emptying the buildings of all their stuff in a crazed fashion? The very same. I am also sure that you are aware of the financial demands that will be levelled at you should the properties be unlawfully demolished. Unlawful? The city's on fire! One building does not a city make. Are you a tenant? No, but you should pull them down, so... Then you, like the tenant, cannot give permission to pull down my clients' houses. Oh, I'd rather not be on the fire hook for building costs. But, Mayor, I really think... I durst not do it without the consent of the owners. And the King's authority, I do not doubt. Oh, my gosh, yes. Anyway, it's not that bad. Yes, there's a good Mayor. I've got to find the boys. We've got to get to the King. Um, Mr. Bloodworth? Yes, Mr. Fariner? The, um... The neighbouring buildings seem to be smoking somewhat. Oh, knickers. Come on, answer! Where are they? Oh, drat, it's 3am. They're probably in bed all tucked up, like this episode. Oh, no, this means I've got to wait here until the next episode. Oh, at least I won't be cold. I'll distract myself with an outro. So... For all the baker slander, inept mares, and lack of fire hooks, we have been the Silly History Boys Show! And we are, as always, sorry! Get Fired Up, The Great Fire of London, Part 1, or Episode 87, was written, produced, and mouthed by the Silly History Boys. The parts of Samuel Pepys and Random Man Shouting Fire was played by Stu the Pear Bear Perry. The part of Mayor Bloodworth was played by Will Uncle Bilbo Tristram. The parts of Robert Hubert and the sinister British lawyer were played by your dear Uncle Bob Bob, Rob Bond. And the part of Thomas Fariner, the shifty baker, sorry to the Fariners, were played by Tom Tombo Fern. Sound effects, thanks to Zap Splat. 
and the tiny weeny little clip of music also thanks to Zap Splat. Come check us out on our socials, Facebook, Instagram. Hey, if you are on Facebook, dear Uncle Bob Bob has done a lovely little video explaining everything we're going to do this summer. Every single thing, I'm sure, he says nodding. Because this weekend we are at the Royal Armouries in Leeds being silly for the silly joust. No, wait, we're the silly ones. The joust is super serious and cool. It is pretty cool. It is very cool. If you like what we do and you want to chuck us a tip rather than be better or wash more, why not get onto Ko-Fi and search The Silly History Boys. Please do rate and review on your chosen podcast platform. It really does help. And plus, I think we're on like 39 and I want to get to that nice round 40. I want to get it to that nice round 500 five-star reviews. Okay, we'll be back in a couple of weeks for the second part of The Great Fire of London. Okay, see you later. Bye! Okay, this is a great start. I've got a good start. I've got pins and needles in my feet, but I haven't got time to to sort them out. So I'm just going to... I feel... Ow. I'm just going to... Ow. I'm going to stop the recording.